What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In our last video, we went over how to fetch and display messages in real time between two users. So that's pretty much the core foundation of this messaging app, right? We can send messages between people. This is my app where I'm logged in as Batman. This is the app logged in as the Joker. And we can see here that all of our logic is working beautifully, right? All of these messages were from the Joker. They're to the Batman. If I send a message from Batman to the Joker, test message from Batman to Joker and hit send, we notice that it shows up for both users right away, right? So our app is working beautifully. Next feature that I want us to implement here is displaying the recent messages that each one of these users have. So we need to populate this inbox list with all of the users' conversations and then implement the ability to click on each conversation and have it go over to the chat. Right now, our only means of or point of entry to a chat is by clicking on you know, the users from this new message view. So um, there's a couple things I want us to do before we get started with the recent message stuff though, guys. You guys remember there is a bug we're experiencing where if I click a user and um, you know, say I wanna go to my chat with the Joker, right? I click him and the first time I click him, it's good. But then the second time, if I click the Joker again, it doesn't work, right? So uh, to fix that, it's pretty easy. Um, we just need to add one simple line of code. So let's go to our inbox view really quickly. And in our button handler for where we show this new message view, we're just gonna add this line of code here. We're gonna say user equals nil. So basically guys, the reason this was happening and make sure you don't have the dollar sign there and we actually don't need self either. We could just say selected user equals nil was because we have this on change modifier listening for uh, when that selected user changes. So if I select the same user twice in a row, this on change modifier doesn't actually trigger, right? It's gonna say, hey, you selected the same exact object, so I'm not gonna run this line of code here. So we have to make sure that we just wipe out that selected user if it's there every time we show the new message view, and that should solve that bug. So really quickly, let's just go ahead and run this again. Let me select Heath Ledger. That's good, and then let me select Heath Ledger again, and it's good to go. So that solves that bug there. Um, another thing I wanted to do, guys, was restructure our message service a little bit. You guys will notice that this, uh, these two functions are uh, pretty much just related to uh, a chat we have with a particular user. So I want us to move this up into our chat folder and call it a chat service, and we're gonna add a small change to it as well. So just go up to your chat folder and create a new folder here called uh, service. And then we are going to create a new file and it's gonna be called chat service. And just go ahead and say struct chat service. And then we can just go ahead and grab all of this code we have here. So just go ahead and hit command X to cut that out and replace it with your, uh, or inject that into your chat service. And um, we need to import Firebase up at the top, guys. And I believe that should be good. Now, inside of our chat view model, we're gonna implement this chat service. Um, there is one change I wanna make, though. I want us to inject this with an actual user. So let's go and just say let chat partner be a user here, okay? And then inside of our chat view model, we are going to uh, create a property for this service. So we're, I'm gonna go here and say, let service be our chat service. And we can actually delete this line of code here where we're setting the user object. We don't need that anymore. Um, previously, we needed to pass the user along to our uh, service function calls. But because we're now injecting this chat service with the user, we're not gonna need to do that anymore. So let's just go ahead and say self.service equals chat service with that chat partner that's that particular user and we can delete that property there as well and then let's go back to our chat service and just make some quick changes so we can actually delete this to user guy so let's delete that and let's just make our chat partner id our chat partner dot id right there and we can remove these static function declarations as well here guys 
And let's see, we can delete chat partner right here as well. And that just really cleans up our uh, code here. Um, and the next thing I want us to do guys, before we talk about those changes a little more, is remove this messages collection. I want us to create like a constants folder um, where we're gonna store all of our Firebase uh, data, uh, database collections. So um, let me collapse that core folder really fast. And I want us to go up to the top here and make a new folder called utils. And let's go ahead and put that right below our service folder and make a new file here called constants. Let's say import Firebase. And we're gonna create a struct here called Firestore Constants. Constants, right? And we are gonna just uh, create two constants here. So I'm gonna say let uh, users collection equal Firestore dot Firestore dot collection users. And then let messages collection equal Firestore dot firestore dot collection messages. So now everywhere we were typing all of this stuff out repeatedly, we can replace using our firestore constants structure. So let's go back up to our core folder and go back to our chat service here. And let's just uh, delete that messages collection guy. And here we can just say firestore constants dot messages collection. And we can copy and paste that right here as well. And I believe we just need to make those properties static, guys. So let's go back to this utils folder and say static let and static let right there. Um, and those errors should go away. And here we need to replace that as well. So we can say firestore constants dot messages collection. So this is way cleaner and now we can use these constants anywhere we want to in our application guys. Um, so really quickly, I think we just need to go back to our view model now and replace this stuff with replace message service with service dot observe messages. And we no longer need this guy right here. And then this is going to be service dot send message. Message text. So let's go ahead and just hit command B to build our code and make sure our refactor is looking good. And that is um, looking great guys. So that's a lot better. Uh, the reason I did that was because I wanted to keep our code, um, you know, very modular and organized really, because this stuff is really just related to our chat. Um, you know, this, this, the service folder down here is gonna be for like generic, like shared service functions but things that are only related to a particular uh, like structure or component in your app, I like to cr like make sure that uh, you organize your code and structure it in a way that makes sense, right? And this makes a lot more sense than what we had before. And it also show you, shows you guys how to inject something into your, uh, what's it called, into a service and then use the service in a different way. So now we are requiring that we inject this chat service with a user because we obviously have to send messages to a user and observe the messages we have with a particular user. And then um, we then use the service slightly differently, right? We're initializing it and creating an instance of that service and then using the service throughout the class. So that was just a quick refactor, guys. Um, you know, this did end up taking a little bit longer than I expected. So I think I'm just gonna call this video here. And in the next video, we are gonna go over how to start implementing, um, you know, fetching and displaying our recent messages or conversations that we have with users in the application. So thanks for watching this one, guys. Our code's looking really, really clean and super professional. We'll see you in the next video where we're gonna go over how to fetch these recent user messages and conversations. Peace.